Uh, and with that, welcome to this today's workshop hosted by Klein Big Data. This is the bioinformatics skills for microbial genomics, getting started with Linux containers and Nextflow workflows. Very uh, long list, long name. If you want to tweet about the workshop, hopefully with nice things, you can say whatever you want. The hashtag is Klein Bioinfo Skills. Um, feel free to, to post your excitement up on Twitter. And uh, at least for my talk, you can take whatever screenshots you want of the, of the slides and post them online and do whatever you want with that. All right. So uh, today is, we have a very full day. It's going to be a one day introduction course, a crash course at a number of different platforms, including uh, the use of containers. So containers include Docker and Singularity. We're going to be taking you through workflow languages, in particular Nextflow, DSL2, and uh, we will be touching on SnakeMake as well. Uh, we'll, as part of that, all of both technologies are built on the Linux command line. So in using this and going through the material with us, you'll be becoming more familiar with the Linux command line. And uh, the way it's going to work is that you should all have access to a cloud virtual machine provided by uh, Climb Big Data to the Quadrum Institute. And you'll be assigned to uh, a cloud virtual machine and you'll be working in pairs or in small groups on the same machine. So it'll be like one or two people per, per virtual machine. And hopefully the, the right hand side is a screenshot of what it looks like when you log in. Hopefully you're not completely terrified of this black screen with a blinking cursor, uh, because that's where we're going to be doing most of our work today. Now, uh, as part of the prerequisites in the courses, this is kind of communicated to the website and to the uh, material but you do need to have a basic understanding of navigating Linux command line. So commands like CD, LS, grep, cat, so on. Um, if throughout the day, if you find any of the content that we're talking about, so containers or the workflow languages, if they start to become a bit too overwhelming and you get tired out, we do have a uh, sort of self self-guided uh, software carpet, carpentry course uh, link to that. And that's in the uh, Learning Linux channel on Discord. So you can work through that material. That's much easier and that's more fundamental Linux command line. Um, you can spend the day working through that if you feel like the, the content we're talking about here is a bit too much and you start to get tired towards the afternoon. Uh, you will need a basic understanding of microbial genomics. We will be sort of, that's what our examples are going to be. Uh, you will need a stable internet connection and access to a web browser. And you will need a two-factor authentication application to get onto the QIB Cloud virtual machine. Uh, our recommended one is Authy. There is a... Uh, could you post that document in the chat again, Andrea? Uh, Tang's uh, guide to, to using the Cloud VM. Um, the instructions of, of how that all works. Uh, yeah, Andre will just post that into the chat for everyone to, to use, uh, to, to go over if you're not aware of that or if you haven't done that yet. Uh, the outcomes of the course is that you will learn how, uh, how bioinformaticians organize their data and analysis, how most of us here are sort of seasoned bioinformaticians who have been doing this for a while and we've adopted a particular mode of working and that's sort of what most of the course is going to be showing you how how we how we work sort of the the current zeitgeist of, of how we approach our, our projects and what and that encompasses using Linux containers how we deploy software through Linux containers how we chain different software together, to run in a pipeline via uh, platforms such as Nextflow and SnakeMake. We'll be introducing you how to write your own um, workflows using sort of existing Nextflow modules. And then we'll be showing you how to use these frameworks to run uh, regular bioinformatics analysis. And so those at the bottom, that's just all of the, the logos for the different uh, technologies that we'll be going through today. So the uh, workshop is hosted by Climb Big Data. 
So I'll have a few words about how uh, Climate Big Data. Uh, Climate Big Data is a cloud environment with root access to virtual machines, and it comes with pre-existing uh, operating system and software. There are seven academic partners all over the United Kingdom. Um, the, there are uh, enhanced storage and graphical processor units available to Climb users. There are tools for sharing software and data. There's um, research software engineers. Looks like the, okay. Oh yeah, if you can drop the Zoom link again in the Discord channel, that would be great. Just so if people don't get lost. Um, Research software engineers available for hire and um, CLIMB is sort of working to integrate with other external facilities such as like sequence repositories. So if you're interested in applying for an account, there's a free tier available. You can go to the CLIMB website and register and a member of the CLIMB team will need to verify your application before granting access. And uh, the primary users of the system are salary positions those with salary positions in UK academic institutions, government agencies, or healthcare systems who have the status of an independent researcher or team leader. If you don't fit into that category, you can get access to someone like that as a collaborator as well. All of the information is up on the website, or you can email the Climb Big Data account if you have any questions. Uh, Climb Big Data is also offering paid tiers. And so this is for intensive or sustained use of climate big data. And the idea is that you would chip in a small percentage of a grant budget to, to access a particular amount of resource, or you can casually uh, rent train uh, VMs for training purposes. You can also um, hire research software engineers to help you out with your projects. Uh, we'll have training events that like paid, paid training events available the PhD student subscriptions available. And if you have any questions or you need a quotation, just email the Climb Big Data account. So these are the people who will be running the course today. There's, there's Anna Price, who's based in, in Cardiff. There's Mavis and Lisa, who are the project managers for Climb. There's Andrea, uh, who a colleague of mine at uh, QIB. Tang, who's the... Uh, expert orchestrator of all of the cloud infrastructure here at QIB and is working behind the scenes to keep everything ticking over. Um, myself, lowly me, tagging along, and Robert Petit from the US State Health Lab in Wyoming, who is going to take us through some of the uh, next flow material towards the end of the day. And uh, what about you? Who, who, are, who are you? Where are you dialing in from? where you base, let us know in the Discord in Modern Bioinformatics channel. Uh, it'd be good to see, it looks like from the registrations is that we have people from all over the world dialing in today, which, which is excellent. So this is just an overview of the schedule. We've already come into the formal welcome component. We just finished the orientation and uh, orientation segment. And, uh, about now, maybe in about a couple of minutes, I'll start with my formal lecture on, uh, which is going to give an overview of all of the different technologies and how we approach our projects and how we can use these most effectively. It's mainly going to be the, the why and the motivations of, of why we, we do it this way. And then it's going to get very practical with using Conda and SnakeMake and containers with Anna Price after that, that will take us to, to lunch uh, then there'll be the first practical session after that, which will get you to actually use, um, use that theory into practice. And then at around 2.30, we have an extended, we have a segment on next flow, an afternoon break, and then a, which is just going to be talking about the basic usage of how you get used to, to get used to next flow and get some, some basic work done. And then we'll have, uh, a, a wider view of the, the landscape and more specific um, problems you might encounter from, from Rob at the end of the, towards the end of the day. And then at around 5.20, we'll have a discussion panel where all of the questions that you've come up, any sort of major themes that we've encountered during going to the, the content today, we'll revisit and we'll have a good discussion of that and try and tie it all together 
uh, and finish hopefully by about six o'clock GMT. In terms of difficulty, uh, my talk is really just theory, so it's going to be pretty cruisy. But then once we get into the practical stuff, I'm expecting people to, to find working with Conda and working with the containers um, is going to be a little difficult. And uh, in terms of uh, difficulty curve next floor is definitely much more difficult from much more difficult than that. So it's going to kind of ramp up throughout the day. And I'm not expecting everyone to necessarily get to all of the material. Um, that's why we're going to make the material available after the course. So you can dip in and out of it, revisit stuff. Um, so, so, yeah, so if you, so don't feel bad if, if it, it's a lot to take in and this really, what we really want you to, to feel is, uh, is to see the landscape and see what's available from that and hopefully be inspired not necessarily be able to do everything, but sort of get a taste of what's going on. And then that will allow you to plan out your, uh, your project and, and sort of how you approach these technologies in the future. So I've been mentioning it throughout, throughout the orientation so far, but I'll recap. You do need to have three platforms up and running for, to be able to go through all of the material on the course. Uh, you need the Zoom. The Zoom is gonna act like our sort of lecture theater where we're all just talking where we're sort of just talking at you. All of the interaction should be happening on Discord. So unless something is really wrong, please try to use the Discord chat, the Discord channels for just conversation, uh, casual conversation, asking questions uh, and, and so on, uh, on on the Discord platform. And then the Cloud VM is the sandbox in which you're going to try everything out and have a good play with. So I'll just really quickly cover Discord and Zoom. So um, you should already have access to these. Keep asking the questions on Discord. Try to avoid the Zoom chat unless you're very, unless something is horribly wrong. Uh, don't be shy, ask those questions. Uh, during sessions, moderators or, or, or will take your questions and ask them due to uh, ask the speaker during lecture sessions. Um, that's much easier to manage than having people unmute and, and all talk over each other during a, a, a Discord um, session. Do try to be respectful, treat this like you are at any other scientific meeting. Um, talks will be recorded, I've mentioned that, and material will be made available online and contact any of the course coordinators if there's any issues. Uh, Discord, if you don't know what that is, it's a it's a voice over IP sort of instant messaging platform. It's this mix of IRC, chat room, and Skype all together. Uh, there's a range of different channels available. Uh, most of them are designed to be to separate out of the different topics. And so if you have a sort of extended question about Nextflow, post it in the Nextflow channel. Extended question about Conda and Snakebake, post it in the Snakebake channel. And you can do this out throughout the day. Just keep that conversation going. Uh, you know, we're going to cover formally content sync make in the morning, but if you have more queries and so on, just keep asking, keep, keep getting involved and interact through those different channels. Uh, the virtual machine, just a quick rundown of the virtual machine. Uh, coordinators should have assigned you into groups. You should have access to a virtual machine now. Uh, hopefully the document was posted in the chat it's up on the discord as well you have access to that and you're able to go through it and you're able to access your cloud vm so you should see this black screen qib cloud whatever and you've got the blinking shell um, cursor there all ready to go uh, the way to access is you will need to sign in you'll need to have your two-factor authentication and um, set up and uh, you'll be presented with, once you log in and you, you've given the, the, the six digit code, you'll have this sort of panel with all of these different VMs. You go to the VM assigned to you and you'll be good to go. There is an option, I think, yeah, just one more thing on the two-factor authentication. When you first log in, so your credentials, your user password is sent to you by email, you'll get this screen. Multi-factor authentication enabled for your account. Uh, you need to, get a third party app we recommend Authy. it's lightweight and easy to use you just need it for this and uh you can then delete it afterwards 
you use that app to scan that QR code, and then it will show you a six digit code that you then enter uh, when prompted. So if you're having any problems with that, uh, just post in the Discord now. We went through a lot of this during the orientation session at 9 a.m. and I'm assuming everyone's sort of up and running at this point. Uh, if you're really, really struggling, uh, you've got until basically Anna's talks to really uh, get things up and running. I'm not going to be using any of the cloud stuff initially in, in my session. So you've got a little bit of bar. Yeah, that's the Twilo Authy if you want to uh, uh, app, if you want to use that fill. It should work uh, for if you've got an existing one like Microsoft Authenticator or Google Authenticator, that should work. Uh, but Authy is the one that we're recommending and we've tested it and we know for sure that it works to that. Uh, I'll, ask, I'll ask the questions at the end. Uh, I'll just quickly go to this one last thing. So configuration and screen sharing. So it's there is the option to share your screen with other people. Uh, this is sort of like a read-only thing. It's sort of just a, a screen share, just shows people what you're doing. They can't interrupt you or type over you or anything like that. Uh, most of the features available that if you have problems like you want to make the text bigger or you want to change the colors or something like that in your uh, session for your VM, you do control alt shift or on Mac OS, it's control option shift and you'll get this little menu. It's shown there on the, on the left hand side of the screen. And uh, if you at the top is where the share button is. And if you go to that and you should click share, uh, you'll get that link. And if you paste that link in the Discord or you, you send it to your friend or whatever, they will be able to see your, your session as you type, as you work. So that's a good way if you want to uh, coordinate with people or you want to show someone during the course, like, hey, I'm stuck with something or I want to show off how great I am, you can, you can share your, your session that way with other people and they'll just be able to watch what you're doing. Um, because you're sharing your virtual machine with at least one other person, uh, try to make a separate directory for your work in your home directory. So don't just work directly in the home directory, otherwise you'll start overriding each other. So in this case, I just sort of did make do a bill. I'll just work in my Nabil folder for the day. Uh, just use your name, you can use whatever you want. Um, the other thing is that some aspects, like for instance, Docker will work system-wide. And so don't be surprised that when you run certain commands, it'll be like, oh, this has already been done. This is already installed. It's like, yeah, it's probably your partner has already done it. Don't worry too much about that. I don't think that's going to happen very much you know, during, the, during the day. But just keep in mind that you are sharing and play nice, play nice with your neighbor. So that's it for the introduction, a little slower than I thought. But uh, any questions on that? We all set on the first three platforms. I'll have a look on any questions from the Discord. Otherwise, I'll press on.